Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and at GDC this year, Unity just released their annual Unity 2024 Gaming Report. Uh, now, this is a survey of Unity developers, a bunch of information gathered from both Unity's back-end systems, as well as surveys they conducted, and it gives us an insight to how things are working in the world of game development. Now, I do keep in mind this Mark Twain quote. There are three kinds of lies. Lies, damned lies, and statistics. And this report is going to be full of lots of statistics. Now, I'm not saying Unity is lying to you, anything but. I just keep in mind, Unity sells a number of products in these areas we're going to talk about. And the audience that is being surveyed here is of Unity developers. So just keep in mind, these statistics are going to skew a certain way. But there's still a lot of interesting things in this study, especially around AI topics. But it goes beyond that. So we're going to skim through this. This is a very long report, so I'm not going to go through all of it. Uh, but we're going to look at some of the more interesting aspects aspects of it. Uh, so in terms of where they got this information from, it draws from data from approximately 5 million Unity developers and 342 billion ad views. Analysis integrates insights from polls, surveys, Unity's broad community of industry veterans, studio partners, and in-house experts to enable uh, better strategic planning. So that's where they get the data from, basically from, you know, uh, Unity ads, um, the uh, iron source server stuff there. Um, there are things there. Plus, they pulled developers for a number of it. So they broke this down to five particular trends behind this. A lot of this actually came from surveys. And you're talking about a sample size of about 300 studios. So um, not small, but definitely not massive. And where the interesting thing comes in, this is where I put the, uh, the quote for on the front of this, is they say that 62% of studios surveyed said they used AI in their workflow. That's interesting. That's actually much higher than I would have thought. Although when you stop, go back to it, it comes down where you actually draw the line at what is AI. If you use a tool like Cascadour, are you using AI? If you're using, um, I guess if you're using Photoshop and you use Firefly Suite, you're using AI. And of course, if you use ChatGPT or anything else, you're using AI as well. So it's also interesting to know how much AI and how they are using it. And they're saying, um, uh, mainly prototyping quickly, concepting, asset creation, and world building. Uh, and then we get into some of the other areas. This is one of those areas where you're not going to be able to get a lot of insight normally. Uh, this is Unity opening up their back end server data to come up with this. And that is on uh, things like in-app purchases. So in-app purchase average per daily user declines in revenue, but in-app advertising is on the rise. So this is about how uh, people are basically monetizing their games and trends there. Uh, and then we've got details about shipping multi-platform. So uh, this is an area, quite a bit of growth there. So between 2021 and 2023, multi-platform games have grown 40% proportionally. While studios with limited resources largely stuck to a single platform release strategy in 2022, they've built 71% more multi-platform games over the past two years. And I wonder how much of that's actually, like would you target uh, the Switch and PC now because things like Steam Deck exist? Uh, would you go on the mobile platforms because the mobile, uh, the web support is better than it used to be and so on. Uh, interesting uh, topic overall. And then multiplayer. Uh, so for many people, social dimension of gaming is a must. Studios are responding to this demand. In 2023, mobile-only games with multiplayer features have 40% more monthly active users than single-player games. And multiplayer gaming revenue grew by $2.3 billion, which is 10% increase overall. And then this one is blah, 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 blah. Uh, so lifespan of their game IP by deepening audience attachments. This is basically a, a sales pitch to buy live ops services. So uh, th this is probably the most important part. Where did this data actually come from? Like I said, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Uh, the big chunk of the part that you're going to find about the, uh, the AI side of things came from uh, surveying game developers who are invited to participate via various means such as social media advertisement, Unity customer emails, and community channels. In total, 300 respondents completed the survey with a margin of error plus or minus six. So that's where most of the AI stats are going to come from. Other data included the state of toxicity report that they commissioned in 2023 of 407 developers with plus or minus 5% uh, margin of error. Unity sent its beta survey of 7,000 respondents with a plus or minus 2%. Now, do keep in mind, anyone that was in the unit census beta is obviously going to be pro AI in their approach because that was as <laughs> uh, um, sentence is an AI solution. So uh, just so you're aware there. And asset management collaboration survey of 120 developers with a margin of error of plus or 9%. And 2023 Statista Digital Market Insights Report. Uh, and all of the data was anonymized for like their server stuff. Here's how they broke down the size of the various different studios in their reporting. 
And then, uh, yeah, so we get into the AI side of things. Uh, now, there are some interesting facts here beyond just AI, uh, so just about game development in general, uh, such as the average development cycle for a game made with Unity was 218 in 2022 and became 304 in 2023. So it's taken 50% longer to create games at this point in time, which is definitely interesting. Uh, the problems they had working with these things is long R&D time with, or learning the tech, basically, integrating it with their systems, keeping project organized, collaborating as a team, and not having enough time. Uh, then we go down here, how people are actually using AI. And this part I, I find weird um, to a huge degree, because I don't think that improving character animations would be the most popular use of AI, with the exception of something like Cascadeur, which is, you know, machine learning, learning driven AI tool. Uh, so I find it strange that improving character animation was the most used thing. I would have actually thought that 37% run right here, uh, speeding up code. So basically co-pilot type integration. Um, and then generating art and artwork for game levels came in next. Writing narrative design, so that would be your chat GPT to do dialogues, etc., that kind of thing. Uh, automated play testing, adaptive difficulty. These two are kind of on the verge of AI. Like it's machine learning for sure, but I don't really look at this as the same as all these other things. Uh, and then we've got uh, in-game text and voice chat moderation at the bottom use. Um, 71% of students report that using AI improved their delivery and operations. Again, do keep in mind that the community is um, self-selecting in this particular case. Uh, so next up, we have uh, prototype length. This is interesting as well. How long do people spend on their game prototypes? And as you can see here, the vast majority is one month to three months. So between those two, one to three months is basically... Um, what are we looking at? 90% of the, the community are there and with under three months being the answer there. So I'm assuming under three months means and over one month uh, otherwise. But you can see basically one to three months is the typical time to prototype a game. Um, and then we go on down here, what the textures and materials are the most used pre-made assets. So uh, if you're using things, I assume this is Unity store type purchased asset stuff. Um, and then, so yeah, textures and materials, number one, script and code, number two, 3D assets for games, number three, animations, number four, 2D images and sprites, audio files, and then down from there. Um, this seems about right to me, to be honest. And then um, we go on down, what do we got next? So uh, AI to create NPCs. Uh, so I don't understand the graph though. I wonder if this thing, 64% of people are using AI for non-NPCs? Or, or why they would you? I'm not 100% sure. I don't get the graph. This is what happens when you don't label your graph. AI elements, 64%. Uh, anyways, it's a breakdown of how people are using it. Again, this is segmenting from Unity Sentis, though, which is a Unity AI solution. So this is why people are using Unity Sentis, I suppose, is what you'd break that down, uh, not necessarily AI itself. 56% of AI adopters say they use it for world building. Uh, AI is most commonly used for AR, VR, and online multiplayer games. So you break down people using AI and the type of games they're creating. Again, AR, VR, online multiplayer, casual, and then uh, open world, Role playing and down from there. Again, that is analyzing to the Centus users as well. Um, biggest reasons why uh, people aren't using AI adoptions uh, have an interest but not enough time. Uh, I or my colleagues don't have the technical skills. I didn't know, know what is possible. I don't know the purpose other. I find that hard to believe that moral reasons isn't on there. But again, this is this is going to people that are using uh, Centus. So it's a self selecting group. Um, and then number of assets. Again, this is nothing to do with AI, just basically projects, how many assets are in a project. And interestingly enough, the 51% is less than 1,000 assets. So the majority of projects are actually under 1,000 assets. And then you get uh, 1,000 to 5,000 here are the two big numbers there, breakdown, how they deal with assets. So this is literally just like, um, you know, not asset creation, just management of assets and how long you spend. Uh, actually, you know, dealing with them. Again, Uni is trying to sell their digital asset management solution. And so that's probably where this is all coming in here. Um, now we get more interesting when we get into the next little category here and we get into the money side of things. Uh, and then the big thing here is the, um, the mobile um, earnings have really changed a lot here with how they work. So uh, mobile retention is slightly down worldwide. Um, in-app revenue faces pressures while in-app advertising revenue is on the rise. So in-app uh, revenues went down uh, about, what is that, two to uh, 20 to 30% uh, between the years, whereas the 
um, in-app purchase player rates are also decreasing. So you can see year over year over year. Honestly, uh, this I, I hate this kind of marketing, so I would love to see this market start falling apart for sure. Uh, and then in-app purchase transactions and average spend per player stayed pretty st very steady. Um, so people are paying the exact same amount per, per user. And the dollar, uh, the value per transaction average has actually gone up. So less people are buying stuff, but they're spending more money, it would appear. Um, and then in-app advertising revenue is way up this year. Uh, so it went from 0 0.3 to 0 0.38. So was that 20%? Um, increased there. Uh, so 26.7% oh, going up there. So some definite interesting things when it comes to uh, the way people are earning money on their games. And it's something you don't normally get insight to. So I do appreciate that about this report. And they got some breakdowns of how you can monetize your game and so on. Like I said, this port report is absolutely massive. Uh, in terms of shipping to more platforms, um, we got a breakdown there. So small studios are shipping more games on multiple platforms. We had the summary numbers early on, so I'm not gonna go into the, the breakdown here, uh, but you see games being built to run on three plus platforms uh, is quite up in 2023 uh, and then we move on to the next category again th there is a ton of detail to, to dig into in this report uh, but they did they do a very good job of the multiplayer breakdown in the summary at the very beginning so that was there and then devs prioritize multiplayer despite greater complexity so this is adding multiplayer to your game again they broke this down really good uh, with the uh, the initial summary there. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail there. I'm already past 11 minutes covering this report. And then I think section number five, I think was probably the least interesting, which again, if we go back to the very beginning, uh, number five was uh, the industry is building stronger brands and extending engagement, blah, blah, blah. By the way, there is this little quick control you can do to jump between uh, things for more details if you want to jump in and learn more. I do find there's definitely some interesting insights into the 2024 gaming report. Just once again, do keep in mind when you poll, the people that respond to a poll are going to shape the poll results. When the data is coming from a single company, it is going to shape the results as well. I'm not saying that there are inaccuracies in this report. So I'm just saying that the data itself is self-selecting. So it, do, do keep in mind, this mostly applies to Unity developers first, but there are some insights if you're working in other fields that you can draw from this report. So what do you think? Anything there jump out at you, find interesting? Uh, what do you think of the, the Unity numbers? Again, the one that started it all, and the reason why I actually jumped into it, is this initial breakdown. This very first thing that they said is that 62% of studios surveyed said they used AI in their workflows. Do you think that's true? Do you think that's like right on the nose? Do you think it's high or low? I think AI is going to just become ubiquitous with uh, tools in the future of game development, but it'd be interesting to see how we get there and what tools are actually gonna be considered acceptable going forward. But 62%, I, I actually think that's a little high, but I'm curious, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.